is Aftar from Timescale. I'm here to take you through the demo that I showed at DevOps Day in New York City this past week. And that demo is all about using Timescale as a long-term store for Prometheus metrics. So I'm gonna do two things today, take you through the constituent parts of this demo and run you through why you would want to use Timescale, the time series database, as a long-term store to enable uh, cheaper storage and easier and faster analysis of your Prometheus metrics. So let's get started. So the situation in front of me, I've got this database that I'm monitoring that's associated with my application, and I'm using Prometheus and Timescale in order to monitor the database. So this is a very common situation. Often you wanna have a separation between your application database and the database and monitoring infrastructure that you actually use to monitor the status of that application. Uh, and so that's what I've got today. I'm actually using uh, Timescale and Prometheus to monitor this database. So I've got some metrics in front of me, uh, things like the percentage of memory that's being used. Uh, this is all on the past one hour. So things like percentage of memory use, CPU breakdown uh, from uh, different CPUs. I've got things like the percentage of disk use, telling me you know, when I'm gonna run out of disk soon. Fortunately, this one looks okay. And things like you know, the Postgres uh, user connection account, service status, network activity, so on. Now, the way that we've uh, set this up is that we're actually using uh, time scale as the data source to power these graphs. So we're not using the Prometheus uh, data source that's also found on Grafana. We're actually using the Postgres data source um, in this case, time scale, you can see time scale DB is activated over here. And the advantage of doing that is that we can actually write these uh, dashboards that we're, uh, that we're creating in the SQL query language. So let me, uh, opening up this uh, memory use percentage query, I'm actually seeing like, you know, this query is not being written in PromQL, it's being written in SQL. And uh, that allows me to uh, more greatly express, you know, what sorts of things that I'm looking for uh, when I want to uh, write these queries. Uh, so to give you a, a look of the behind the scenes of what's going on, we are actually using a couple of things uh, to make this happen. So uh, overview of the architecture, we have uh, this uh, database that's running uh, in Timescale Cloud actually, and we're using Prometheus to scrape metrics from this database. And then what we're doing is we've set up timescale as a remote write for Prometheus metrics. So what Prometheus is doing is scraping the metrics and then writing them to timescale DB. And then what I'm doing in this, uh, this Grafana uh, query over here is actually querying that timescale DB instance that uh, has all the Prometheus metrics in order to generate that graph. There's a couple of ways to, uh, to do this, a uh, couple of steps to do this rather. The first step that we used is use something called the Prometheus Postgres adapter, which um, I'm gonna open up the GitHub page right now. The Prometheus Postgres adapter, which you can see here configures uh, timescale or Postgres in this case as the remote storage for Prometheus. The other thing that we use is an extension that timescale developed as well called the PG Prometheus extension. So you can see this actually configures the schema and other things to allow you to use Postgres as uh, the data store for your Prometheus metrics. So let's take a look at these things in action. What I have over here, I'm just using uh, PG admin in order to look at the um, data that's inside my database. And if you take a look at the schema right now, I have a couple of uh, schema here. One is called prom data. The other one is called Prometheus. This is a, as a result of that PG Prometheus extension. And then when I actually take a look at my tables, um, here, uh, there's a couple of tables that I'm interested in. So the first one, I'm just gonna look at the first 100 rows, is a table of values. So I have a timestamp, the value, and the label ID. And uh, I've separated the label ID from the value. So I just have a table of values that tells me, okay, at this time, this label had this value. So initially, these ones are, are all zero, which is, which is common. And then I have this labels table, the metrics labels table, which actually maps the ID to its metric name and tells me uh, a little bit more about uh, the label with this JSON blob that's associated with it. Now, this is very powerful because if you're using um, 
structured metrics, you can actually still store uh, the um, uh, all the uh, parameters associated with that metric in a JSON blob. So via uh, I have uh, in ID one uh, all these metrics are called CPU usage, but you can actually see uh, they're actually for different CPUs. So this one is for CPU one, CPU two, CPU three. So by querying what's inside the JSON B in this labels um, column, I can actually see you know how the usage is being split among my three CPUs in this case, for example. So that's uh, an overview of the schema uh, that we're using today. So all of these uh, metrics are being stored once again in Timescale DB, and when we're querying them, only thing we have to know is the label. That's uh, or the ID that's associated with the label that we want to query. So in this case, what I'm doing here, let me just uh, zoom in on this, is I know that the uh, memory available is under the ID uh, 9143. I know this beforehand. And then I just query in one minute uh, intervals the average value of that memory that's available. And I can see in real time how that changes um, and that tells me you know how much of my memory is being used in in this database so that gives you an overview of like what we're doing here I, I, as as i mentioned um, to, to the people at devops day this is a very simple demo to show you uh you know what's possible there's a couple of reasons why you'd want to use time scale as your long-term store for prometheus metrics so the first of all um, one thing about the separation between your label ID and the label uh, values is it actually uh, helps things scale better. You can uh, store a lot more labels and in less space. And then the other advantages are advantages that Timescale DB specifically makes for a time series data like metrics. So first of all, we have things like compression, which allows you to store lots of custom Prometheus metrics really cheaply using Timescale. You can get uh, somewhere around two bytes per metric uh, that you have, and this reduces uh, the cost uh, that you'd spend on things like disk uh, and whatnot. The second thing that we offer is uh, downsampling. So this allows you to keep uh, long-term data, uh, long-term data of your trends from your Prometheus metrics. So in this case, instead of keeping uh, data that we scrape on a per second basis, you can actually keep roll-ups of that something like maybe a minute, maybe every uh, 30, 30 minutes or one hour. And you, by keeping that data in aggregate form, in a roll-up form, you can actually keep it around for a lot longer so that you can better use finite disk and compute resources. And that also gives you more insight about how your system performs over a longer period of time. Um, so that's uh, the it for the demo today. I'm gonna put some links in the description about how you can get started including this uh, documents page about getting started with Prometheus Timescale DB, which takes you through how to set up uh, Prometheus and Timescale together. Um, and so uh, that's gonna be there for you. Uh, and then once again, you can uh, pretty easily make uh, a dashboard very similar to this. Uh, so thank you again for listening and uh, do get started with using Prometheus and Timescale today.